all right guys you're welcome back okay so now what happens normally when you you know run your browser okay when you when you visit a website what happens what happens is this the browser runs through your code from top to bottom okay so it runs through your code from top to bottom and you know creates a DOM a document object model and I would like you to always think of your you know um, pages your website pages as documents okay so you are writing documents that's what you're doing so the browser runs through your document from top to bottom and you know interprets the codes that you are writing based on standards that the browser understands okay and creates a DOM okay so that's what happens okay now uh, what do I want you to take from that I want you to take uh, the fact that the browser runs from what top to bottom that's the normal flow of you know your browser that's the normal what flow of your browser okay um so when we talk about conditionals we, we are talking about controlling what happens you know when your browser does its normal flow so you are controlling the flow okay so you can say skip this particular you know set of logic of code if this condition is met or it's not met and if it's not met yeah run this particular set of logic okay so you can control the flow of your what of your program okay and when you talk about loops using loops you are controlling the flow of your program you can say run this set you know of commands for this amount of time which uh without any kind of uh control or any type of uh you know conditional statement the browser would ordinarily run from top to bottom you know yeah if there are no errors in your program so this is this is when you make use of conditionals when you want to control the flow of your program you don't want it to just go straight like that of course it will be uh, you know boring to an extent if your uh, program is not dynamic so you want to make it dynamic you want to control how the flow works then you make use of conditionals okay so and that's what we are being you know talking about so if we come here ordinarily your um your browser would interpret the code from starting from one to eight okay yeah so what we are saying is this oh browser there's no problem you can go here normally so it runs normally from one line one to line three then when it gets to line four it sees an if so it knows that this is a point of decision i'm being told to you know decide on how to proceed from here on based on setting conditions okay so the browser understands and it comes here to look at the condition so what you're saying is browser if there is money on ground that's if this is true all right note that anything inside this bracket must evaluate to either true or false that's what is expected okay so we are saying that if money on ground okay check this value and see what it has if money on ground evaluates to true print this statement on the console else print this statement in the console okay now uh, this can be written like this okay without this but it's it becomes confusing as you can testify becomes really confusing okay it can be written like this all right yes and it should work i think this should work yes there's no money on ground see that it works okay yeah we're saying if this condition is true do this else do this but this is discouraged because 
you you don't just write quotes for yourself okay you write it for yourself and others in terms of developers because in the real world you would almost not be working alone you're working with a team okay and in this case uh you are working with you know your instructor so when you submit your code your code has to be readable so readability is one important uh, 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 concept that you need to you know put into consideration when you write your code and you see that this is more readable and it's more practical we are creating a scope for this okay so that's when we say okay so we are create, creating a scope it's more readable so we can write other codes here and we know that all these codes are only going to run you know if this condition is true okay else if it isn't true then you create another scope for you know some other um, set of codes to run okay so that is that this is right so that is how it works okay so i'm taking the time to explain this for us now if an if state if else statements can become more complex okay uh you can have nested if statements so i can say if there's money on ground and if that's inside that one now if there's money on ground come into the scope and execute what's inside and when you know control gets inside that scope it sees another if statement and say if again is hungry then there is no money on ground i can get something to eat okay i can now see else that's if i'm not hungry so if it's hungry is true okay yeah if it evaluates to true then print this if it evaluates to false then come here and console the log there is no money on ground i am not hungry okay there is money in Okay, so this is our words. You see, now we have a nested if statement inside our if else statement. So this can get very, very complex, but uh, uh, for now, limit you know, the number of nesting, okay, until you know what you are actually doing. Then you can go ahead and, you know, nest as necessary and acceptable according to conventions, okay? But you get there for beginners. Uh, know that you can nest if statements inside if statements so let's test this to see how it works but first of all we expect an error but i want it to you know throw that error so that we can tackle it okay there is money on ground send money now there's no money on ground because okay, so this is four so this entire block is being skipped okay so we didn't have the error because this is false but if i increase this guy to 10 which makes this evaluate to true this block is going to run and then we'll see our error so if i refresh you see our error is hungry is not defined if you remember uh from our first lecture you will know what that means you will know what that means okay so let's go Hung is hungry we are going to declare a variable called is hungry so is hungry equals um true so i'll just say true directly okay and um, that should work now so you see there is now money on ground i can get something to eat so this is working because this is true okay if i say false you see that the air statement prints instead so there is money on ground but i am not hungry okay so that is that okay this is we just talked about nested uh, if statement okay now there is another concept you know still talking about if statements called the if else 
if statement okay we now know we know about the if else okay let's let's go over this uh we know the if statement which is like this we know the if else statement which is like this and now i'm introducing the if else if so if else if all right this is how this looks okay so let me get rid of these guys now at your leisure time you can pause the video you know watch and pause understand what i'm trying to say and you know go from there okay so if else if how does it work you notice that in the case of if else we need not provide another condition okay so this was in there but else if gives you the option to create another condition so i can say if money money what's it about monday money on ground okay or do we do not console the log else if is hungry so if there's money on ground do this and still check if the person is hungry okay okay or if money on ground evaluates to true you know print this if it doesn't evaluate to true there is something else to check check too if this person is hungry okay so if money on ground evaluates to true say there is money on ground else check if the person is hungry and if the person is hungry that's if that evaluates to true we now say uh, uh, but I am hungry okay so let's see how this works I'll say let me run it like this and let's see there is money on ground this doesn't print out because why is hungry evaluates to false okay so that's the reason if I change this to true you see that both this and this are printed out so there is money on ground sure it's supposed to work am i am i doing something wrong else if no as if else if okay sorry i explained this wrongly if this if this is false it checks this but if this is true it doesn't check this that's how if statements work okay so if this if it's if it encounters a value that is uh, a condition that is true every other guy is ignored okay that's how it works but if this is false it keeps checking you know the rest of the you know uh, block okay so if money on ground is true then print this if it's not true go ahead and check for this but if it is true print this and we are good no need to check this so that's how this works okay so let's make this false let's make this zero now and you see that this evaluates to false and this will not be printed so to go ahead and check for this and you know if this is true it prints this if this is false it does nothing so let's refresh and you see but i am hungry okay so that's how it works if i want both of the statements to you know be checked regardless of the outcome of another i'll just simply bring this to a new line and get rid of this if statement so we have two if statements so if money on ground print there is money on ground if it's hungry print but i am hungry okay let me use and i am hungry so if this is false, if for is hungry equals to false, nothing happens here. If money on ground equals to false, nothing happens here. In this case, account balance is 
not greater than zero so this is false so far so nothing will print here but this will be printed because this is true um let's go so and i'm hungry is printed so let's make this true 10 so money on ground but you're hungry there is no money on ground and i am hungry i can improve this and say else i am not hungry and if this is false we shall make it false now if this evaluates to false this will not be printed but this will be printed okay so let's go there is money on ground i am not hungry so we can trick this you know anyhow and get the result that we want okay so i'll end this video here and in the next video we are going to talk about another type of uh, control flow statement or called the switch statement okay the switch statement all right thank you guys for joining if there are any questions reach out to me on slack slick codes or you know leave it on the comment box below thank you so much for your time see you again